Adrian Carr. First of all, I just want to make it clear, I propose your comment, Rex. It is my belief that a city, the city of Vancouver, whose goal is to be the greenest in the world and a global leader of climate change, those goals make tanker traffic in our harbor, the jurisdiction of the city of Vancouver, and we cannot ignore that. Secondly, I really, I, it's more a comment on the three of you, who's, all three of you spoke so eloquently and passionately. Not, none of you mentioned global warming or climate change. One speak, one questioner did. And I, and I realized that also in the articles I'm reading in the newspaper, there's a pullback from that. And I think all of us cannot allow ourselves to be pulled back from the discussion and the relationship of issues like tanker traffic on our coast and what happens to the oil and the tar sands from the issue that I believe is the most compelling in our generation, that of global warming and climate change. Because if you make that the overall issue, I get what I'm seeing is a divide and conquer. Uh, a fight over one route to the states versus a route through northern BC versus tanker traffic to the south coast. And I don't think we can allow ourselves to be divided like that and focus just on one or the other. My request to the variety of environment groups here is that there is a combined effort amongst the people who join on, sign on to the list, etc., to be informed of all of these separate issues so there is a collaborative effort. And we don't miss the ball on one or the other. For example, um, there, there is a hearing, there are hearings going on about the Northern Pipeline. I'd like to know if it's possible, because hearings weren't here, if we can send letters, I believe we can, the deadline's not done. So if someone can inform me and the group about that, I would be very appreciative. Um, so too with the Kinder Morgan Pipeline to Vancouver, by stealth, they are expanding its capacity and we are not informed. And I would like to know if there's a plan amongst the environment groups to keep all of us informed about those things that otherwise we're going to miss on the radar screen. Thanks very much, and thank you to all of you for coming out. I just want to add to, to, to what Adrian has just said about global warming. Is, you know, sometimes, you know, we've been talking about this for long, so long, we take it for granted. But here's something we should all be aware of. Every ounce of oil going through these pipelines will be spilled. And that that isn't spilled into our rivers and into our prairies and into our oceans is spilled into our atmosphere. And this is something we have to understand. Every last drop of that oil gets spilled into the environment. And as we all know, the burning of hydrocarbons and the, the uh, carbon dioxide that our civilization is putting into the atmosphere is heating up this planet, and, and that is a, a really a crime against uh, our progeny. So anyway, thank you for bringing that. Thanks, Adrian. I, I want to tell you a, a few of the things that the Coastal First Nations are doing uh, to, to try and solve the problem that we're running into with climate change. Coastal First Nations in, in 2009 signed an agreement with the province of British Columbia to do an alternate energy plan for the northwest of British Columbia. We've completed that. We did that along with BC Hydro. We are promoting uh, wind energy, some uh, minor run of the river as long as it doesn't harm the environment. But basically, uh, we are out there trying to get ourselves off of petrochemicals. The community that I come from, Hartley Bay on Earth Day, they went in hands down because they shut all their power off, they shut their generators off, but they are going to be building uh, their own generators. When I grew up in the north, all of the mines, all of the sawmills, everything that was there, 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 was, there were no diesel generators. They all run, ran off of these small run-of-the-river generators, and we have way better technology now, but we're not using it. I see in the Fraser where one of the tribes is taking great pride in getting involved and helping solve that problem. I think all British Columbians need to do that. We need to promote that kind of energy for British Columbia. Instead of Site C, 
and, and uh, Berard and uh, LNG and those kind of things. We need to promote a healthy environment for ourselves and we're doing it well, they're doing it right now.